Hi, I'm Corey Williams from Daydream Studios, and today I'm going to save you or your studio tens of thousands of dollars, potentially, if you are looking to get into motion capture. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to share with you all of the motion capture solutions that I have personally worked with or that I know of well, and uh, just kind of tell you which one is the best. So which of these motion capture solutions are the best? You ready for this one? None of them or really all of them, they're all the best, but they're all the best in their own unique ways. And I'm here today to help you decide which is best for your workflow. Because some, even though they have all these great bells and whistles, may not apply to the project that you're working on and others, which might seem kind of sloppy, are perfect. Not to say that your project is sloppy. So let's get right into the first one, which is going to be arguably the most uh, popular one because of the term AI. Move AI is going to be the first one I'm going to cover. I have worked with move.ai uh, on several projects and I've had a lot of luck with it. Um, there are a lot of positives and of course a lot of negatives to using move AI, um, but I'm gonna tell you my experiences to help you kind of decide. Move AI uh, is really great if you are planning to capture uh, a number of people uh, outside. You know, you could do it inside too, but I feel like it's more of an outside sort of capture solution. Um, really great if you're doing like sporting events, uh, if you're trying to say track a ball, or if you're trying to um, even, even bring in people that are of other shapes and sizes. For example, you've got somebody who is super tall and can't fit into a motion capture suit, or somebody who's uh, you know, a little more to love, or, or maybe uh, children. You know, it's really hard to get children into a motion capture suit, A, because you have to get a suit that fits them and kids grow like weeds. Um, you know, and B, if you're doing a solution that requires having to put the little balls on, well, kids tend to knock that stuff off and don't quite listen. So by having move.ai and using all of the iPhones to be able to record that data, you have that. The drawbacks, uh, hands, are not quite there. Fingers are not quite there. They are working so hard on it and I've seen their work and I'm very impressed with what they've done, but I still feel like move.ai still doesn't have hands. Second, um, there are still issues like if you try to cross your arms like this or if you do this with move AI, things get a little bit wonky. So there are certain movements that you cannot do uh, using move.ai and, and you kind of have to just work with those. So understand that you're going to have a certain level of cleanup. Also, move.ai is not real time. You're not able to actually see that stuff come back in real time to know if you've captured what you've got. You know, like you have to send it up to the cloud and it processes and does its thing. I believe it's cloud. Um, and then you'll get that data back. But once you get that data, it's really great. It's, it's good stuff. So the next one is also AI, AR51. What they do is a lot like with Move AI, but they have their own cameras that you set up in a volume. And they told me that you're able to actually move those cameras to different places. Um, the only difference is uh, A, they do real time, which I saw the demo. And it's the, the latency on that was just as much as like an iPhone. Uh, to a computer. If you've ever used an iPhone for AR kit to do like, you know, uh, control faces with metahumans or something like that, it's the same sort of latency. The drawback, more expensive. It's, it's, it's a lot more expensive than Move AI. Uh, you still have the problems with the hands. Again, they're working on it and they're still having some problems with, you know, this sort of stuff. They're working on it. But to be able to see what you're doing in real time is fantastic and uh, bravo to those guys uh, for working on that. So now let's get out of the world of AI. And I know there are other solutions, but I'm kind of sticking with the ones that, again, I've personally worked with or I know enough about to be able to speak on. Uh, we now get into the motion capture suits. Let's start with Rococo. Some of you guys might have heard of Rococo and some of you have purchased a Rococo and some of you have returned a Rococo. Rococo, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, uh, they are really great if you're doing like game development, if you're doing like short takes of animation, uh, if you're doing, yeah, just kind of those little things, that's fine. Rococo isn't something that I would personally 
stream. Like I wouldn't do a lot of real time content with it uh, just because it does seem to lose tracking. And even though they can, you know, uh, work on the feet and stuff, there's, there's the metallic interference, which basically like if you have any kind of metal around, things can just slide and get a little weird. Like your feet might be planted, but your foot might start turning in like this. And it might be that under your feet, you don't know in the slab and the concrete, there's like rebar, you know, or uh, you've got lights in the room and those lights are causing some, some sort of problems. And it really leans on Wi-Fi to work properly. So if you have any sort of, you know, weird stuff going on with that, that seems to be a problem though they do have a new tower that apparently has a new connection i haven't gotten to uh, play with it yet though i've seen it i was at sigraph 23 and i got to watch that demo and it looks like they're they're cleaning that up a lot uh, the great thing about uh, uh rococo is number one their customer support top notch i love those guys they're very responsive uh, and, and they really do care about their community. They've got really great gloves, though I have not played with the gloves. I've seen enough demos to know that they are really great, and so that's really good. Uh, they also have their own um, facial software. So like if you wanted to get their whole, you know, uh, suite where you just, you know, get the, get the motion capture data, the hand data, whatever, it also can like put in the facial data as well. So when you export that FBX and bring it into whatever program you want to, it's fairly easy, uh, straightforward to get all of that retargeted in the right ways. So those are the good things about Rococo. Great for shorter takes, not so good for longer streaming takes like VTuber. Unless, unless you're a VTuber who is sitting. If you have your pelvis locked into a chair and you're doing that, Rococo, that's totally fine. It is cheaper um, than, than the next suits I'm going to say. Uh, and, and it's got, again, great support, great hands. Um, but yeah, those are the things I liked about that. Uh, there's also Perception Neuron. Perception Neuron, I cannot remember the price point of Perception Neuron, but a lot like Rococo, uh, they have great customer support um, and they kind of have a lot of the same features. Um, I would, I haven't personally used Perception Neuron, though I know uh, my good friend Solomon Jogway uses Perception Neuron uh, and, and a few other creators, but if you want to learn more about them, reach out to the Perception Neuron team. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about uh, Xsense. So Xsense is what I personally use, but there are three different layers of Xsense. I believe, I'm going to try to remember all the layers. So let's go from the cheapest to the most expensive. The first layer is uh, a suit that is essentially the same price as a Rococo suit. Um, Xsense is really good at not having any sort of metallic interference. Like, um, I don't know if that's actually what it's called, metallic interference. But basically what happens, again, is like, you know, things start drifting, right? The only problem with the lowest tier of the Xsense suit is that a, it comes with lots and lots of little uh, trackers. Well, not trackers, they're, they're, little, um, they're little boxes. And those little boxes are just kind of a pain to put on because there's all these straps and all of that. And having to charge all of them is such a pain because you have to make sure that all of them are working because if one dies, well, then you're kind of toast. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still a really great, um, and I trust them to uh, be able to do uh, real-time stuff. But, you know, again, you are limited by the battery power of all of that sort of stuff. And the tracking isn't quite as good as the next tiers. Uh, next, we've got the uh, uh, Xsense Awinda. Again, I can't remember the lower version, but uh, the Awinda is the, the middle model. A Winda is, again, an Xsense product, so it doesn't have any metallic interference. Um, and it also uses straps and stuff like that, but it's, it's like sturdier and it just works better. And I feel like it just, it's, it's like almost as good as the next one, but just not quite. And I can't really tell you why, but if you see the animation data side by side, it's, it's almost not really very noticeable to me. It is because I'm a trained professional, like. You know, I, I see it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, really, really great. And it's cheaper than the next one. So it's gone, again, it's their middle tier. Now we're talking the top tier XN suit. This is what I personally use, right? So again, this is for my situation, not necessarily for your situation. Uh, for my situation, I use the XN's MVN Link. 
Uh, for me, it's really great because I, I'm a one-man team, right? I put on my suit by myself. I use Manus gloves. Um, I'm using right now the, uh, the Manus Quantum gloves. And I can record for literal hours. And my motion capture data is so clean in real time that like, I don't, I don't have to think as an actor if I'm in the right place or not because I know the suit is there. And the, you, know, you can, you can um, make it even cleaner and better and faster by hardwiring the suit right into your PC. So using an ethernet cable, you can connect it and it's really, really great. Um, for the MVN Link, the one that I have, like I have, I have two suits. One they sent me just because they sent me. I don't know why they sent me two suits, but I have one suit that fits me, but it doesn't fit everybody. If, if I bring somebody in that can't fit into that suit, then they're not getting tracked. You know, I have to buy a specific textile suit for that to work. Um, I'm also limited on some of the movements that I can do. For example, if I wanna, you know, run and do a roll, well, I'd better have a crash mat or I'm gonna hurt the suit. For me personally, like I am actually a trained wrestler, like WWE style wrestler. I was trained by WWE legends for real. Um, but like there's certain moves that I'd love to do that I know would break the suit. So that's like a drawback too. Um, and, and I wouldn't take it out in the rain I guess you could do that with Move AI. I think you could potentially take stuff out in the rain if you just cover the cameras, um, you know. And and I wouldn't take it out on really hot days just because like heat and electronics. I don't know, you know. But again, I, I haven't really taken my stuff outside to really know. But that's my use case. Now let's talk next level. Now we have Vicon. Vicon. I have used Vicon uh, in, in two different situations, and they have been really great. Uh, great tracking. Uh, flawless, flawless performances. Um, and you never have to worry, obviously, about foot sliding or anything, because you put on this like really sleek looking black suit, you put, you put the balls on, you do all of that sort of stuff, really great. The only drawback is, A, it's pretty expensive. Like, it's out of my budget as an indie guy. Like, I don't, I don't, I mean, I could, but I don't see any reason to, because like, Accents works for me. Um, but it, it, it streams much cleaner than Xsense. Like Xsense still like when you are when you are streaming motion capture data, sometimes there can be little moments of pause unless you're directly hardwired into the computer. But there can be moments of pause where you'll talk and then all of a sudden it just like da 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 da, -da, -da you know like it just does a little pause. Uh, that does not happen with Vicon. Vicon is just constant and beautiful and it just looks really great. The drawback to it is, again, A, it's expensive, and B, you are absolutely locked to that volume. There are cameras, sensors, that are essentially tracking all of those balls in that scene, and if you leave that volume, you're not getting tracked, and things can get all wonky. So you are stuck to that. So you gotta make sure you've got a lot of room uh, and a lot of space, and I don't think there's a problem with reflective surfaces, but there might be a problem with reflective surfaces. Um, and that was something that I saw while working with some of my friends in Los Angeles. Uh, and it does require a team. I don't believe one person can just turn it on, do all that stuff, and then do the calibration and it works. It's, you, you have to have a team. So if you're solo, it's a no-go. Xsense is, anything Xsense and below is more so for you. Um, moving on, uh, now we have OptiTrack. OptiTrack, in my opinion, is like professional, like, yep, you're gonna get great stuff and it's gonna look fantastic. You can have props, you can put the balls on anything and it looks really great. You can, you can do that with uh, Vicon as well. Um, but it's very expensive. <laughs> for, that, for that superior tracking, it is very expensive and it, it, it does share a lot of the same things uh, that uh, Vicon has, but it just does it just, in my opinion, just like a little bit better. Almost not noticeable. I got to do this really awesome um, experience at SIGGRAPH 23 where they basically they, they gave us a VR headset, right? And the VR headset was tracked and I was on a, on a little bike and the bike was tracked. And the fact that I could trust the system, the system enough to be able to put on that headset and the headset would know where I'm at and be tracked. And I was, I was in VR on a big wheel going around a track super fast and I didn't run into anything. So, you know, again, really reliable, uh, very low latency and um, 
I love it. Yeah, there are also like uh, VR motion capture solutions. For those of you who say, who, if you have no budget whatsoever and you're hearing all this and you're like, oh, man, all of this is expensive. Yeah, go there and then you can check that out and that actually gives you VR motion capture. It's a little wonky, but it's a solution that is for free if you have a VR headset. So anyway, those are my motion capture solutions. If you have any motion capture solutions that I haven't covered that you'd like to hear my opinion on, uh, please, by all means, leave a comment down below. And if this, is, this helps you or you think this will help somebody else, please repost this. I think it's very important for us right now, especially as a virtual production community, the, the ones who are building this pipeline together, we need to help each other and all of our other studios because the better that we all do, individually, the better we all do together. So it's not time to, you know, try to take and keep and hide secrets. It's time to give them out and to grow the industry by helping each other. So hopefully this helped you. Again, my name is Corey Williams. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped. I will see you in the next one. Later.